Good evening and welcome to Laguna Beach Historical Society's program this evening. It's June 25th, 2013, for the record. I welcome everyone for coming and to those that are watching on Cox Communications. Thank you to Cox for uh, being here again this evening and recording this um, really great program. I um, want to th thank uh, the City of Laguna Beach always and Wells Fargo Bank. I'd like to thank our members and our board of directors. And I, I guess I'm going to go ahead and introduce, at least briefly, um, our presenters this evening. We have Gene Felder, who is uh, on our board of directors, the Historical Society. He does quite a bit for the Historical Society. Besides putting great presentations together, he is our treasurer as well, and um, generally does all this setup. Anyway, he does an immense amount for the Historical Society, so we're absolutely delighted that he and his uh, partner, Foster Eubank, have put this wonderful program together, presenting their book, which is available in the back of the room. Um, I guess they're doing some signing as well. So, and I think that uh, Jean and Foster are going to give a little bit more detailed introduction about uh, how this book came about. So I want to welcome Foster Eubank, thank you so much, and Jean Felder, for this evening's program. Thanks so much. Turn, turn your mic on. Uh, thanks so much, everybody. Uh, as Kimberly says, I'm Gene Felder, and, and I realize uh, uh, that you don't know Foster Eubank. Uh, he is uh, my co-author, uh, phot photographer extraordinaire, and uh, I thought we'd start by asking uh, uh, Foster to share some personal information. And then I, I did realize that I've, I've never shared any personal information about me. <laughs> and um, so I, I think I, I, I should mention that I've lived in uh, Laguna Beach for 27 years. I've, I've been on the board of uh, uh, the uh, Laguna Beach Historical Society for 11 years, five years as president. And, uh, uh, but I've also been on boards uh, for many years of Village Laguna. Uh, uh, I am currently vice president of the Laguna Canyon Conservancy, uh, and I was vice president for the walk in 1989. Uh, that's right, it's a very difficult organization to move up in. And also, for over 20 years, I've been on the board of my neighborhood association, uh, the Top of the World uh, Neighborhood Association. But uh, for a lot of people, I'm a newcomer to town, but uh, Foster, when did you come to town? 1948. <laughs> Graduated in 1954. A couple of my classmates are back there. Yay. Let's hear for the Laguna Beach High School class in 1954. <laughs> and then, uh, so uh, as we go through here, we've got some historical information uh, that I'll be presenting with the slides. Uh, uh, we work together getting the historic images, and then um, uh, Foster uh, would go out and take the current photograph. So what has changed in Laguna Beach is kind of the theme of the book, then and now. Uh, much has remained the same, but of course much has uh, changed. Um, I like to say that Foster was willing to stand in the middle of Pacific Coast Highway if that's where the historic photo uh, photographer stood to take the historic photograph. And he was willing to scamber up uh, the chaparral to the top of the hillside if that's where the historic photographer took his shot. And that's not exactly true, but it's, uh, it's pretty close to, uh, to the truth. Is that true? That is true. In fact, this hillside right behind us here is where a couple of the photographs came from. Thank goodness that slope is still not covered with homes and so forth, so I was able to get up there to the right spot. So a couple of those, we'll show one of them up here and one of them is in the book. So um, the, uh, the information that we have, uh, as, as you understand, uh, uh, I just moved to town 27 years, so the only thing I know and the information I'm presenting has to do with uh, what's been written about uh, Laguna Beach. So let's begin. Um, now, this is a, uh, uh, a historic photograph. What? You want the lights turned off? All right, just, just ask for what you want. Uh, uh, maybe it's over here. So if you look at this photo down in the corner, it says it's Laguna 1887. 
This is one of the problems we have because over here, where the heck do we have it? We have the uh, uh, Laguna Beach Hotel, the Yacht Laguna Beach Hotel that was uh, constructed in uh, 1895. Ergo, this photo cannot be 1887, uh, even if the uh, very nice handwriting uh, says so. So what do we have to look forward to? Here is a Foster J. Eubank photo. Uh, I don't, this could be going back to 2009. When I say current, we've worked on, well, 2011, 2012, 2013. This is what it looks like uh, today. And it looks very nice, I would say. But uh, much has changed. Until things got busy, and then he added on the Archbishop's hotel Can you add to make it a bigger hotel. I'm Thank done. <laughs> so, so, this, so the, the first stage is beginning, I think it's earlier. And, and it could be within the realm of. You think it could be 1887? Well, in any event, it's hard to pin these things down. Um, uh, here we have the uh, uh, then and now photo on top of each other. Uh, the uh, 1897 image shows the early beginnings of the town of Laguna Beach with the scattered tents along, the, uh, along with some wooden homes on the bluffs, including the Yacht Laguna Beach Hotel built in 1895, seen just above the, uh, the beach at the right center. So that's over here. The foreground beach area shows the sign of drainage. Uh, so um, Broadway wasn't built until the 1930s. So it was the Laguna Creek, which of course today is channeled underneath the uh, Broadway opening under the boardwalk. Today, the landmark Hotel, uh, Hotel Laguna, built in 1930, is the white building in the upper right, right center. Here's a historic photo out on some uh, rocks. Here's uh, Foster's uh, current photo. Uh, then photo shows the great fun of walking on rock outcroppings. Laguna Beach has a seven mile coastline, primarily a series of rocky coves. Often cove names change. Here is Main Beach, but if you hear of Laguna Bay, it's the same place. The tide pools are teeming with life, but now the rules are strictly, look, do not touch. However, as recently as 1960s, a Chamber of Commerce uh, brochure promoted shell hunting. So it's kind of interesting here in Southern California, the top topography is quite different. We have Newport Beach with a large bay, numerous uh, islands, boat harbors, while Huntington Beach has wide, flat, sandy beaches. Uh, I want to ask something to this, this photograph. The rock that those kids are standing on is, let me get this right. This rock here that they're standing on is usually covered over by seaweed during the uh, summer months. The, the city cleans the beach off all seaweed and piles it on top of that rock for some reason. So if you go down there, maybe even starting now, that rock may be completely buried in seaweed, or at least it will be by the end of the summer. So it's only during the winter months when the storms wash all that seaweed and sand away that you can actually see this. I didn't get this picture till the middle of winter. Uh, when it's finally it was uncovered. In the next slide, you'll be able to see more what I was talking about. Rocks right there are the rocks those kids are standing on. You can see how much that sand piled on top of it there. And in the middle of, middle of summer, you wouldn't even be able to see that rock, in case you're interested. So the main beach piers that went off from where the gazebo is near Las Brisas, called Heisler Point, they went out to and beyond Bird Rock. Now, this is Bird Rock uh, off of Heisler Point. Uh, our website, we got a question, uh, what makes a rock a bird rock? And uh, what it is, is poop. That's great. Uh, a guano is the correct word. Any guano and that rock is a bird rock. So here's the, uh, the then and now uh, 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 photos on top of each other. According to Roger W. Jones, who recently sold the village, uh, Villa, Villa Rockledge, he also wrote a book, uh, 
uh, the il illustrated history of uh, Laguna Beach. And he wrote, uh, dating back to 1887, four piers were built in Laguna Beach within a span of 83 years. The first pier in Laguna Beach was the Arch Beach Pier, 1886, and the last was the Aliso Beach Pier, which went from uh, 1971 to 1998. Two piers were built at Main Beach to Bird Rock from Heisler Point. The first Main Beach Pier was built in 1896 by the residents using a $100 contribution for materials from James Irvine, Jr. That pier was built in 1896, lasted 20 years, to 1916. Yeah. I just started working at North American Title, and Ooh. the whole building is surrounded with all of these wonderful old photographs. Thank you. And the the building I'm actually working in has this phenomenal view from the ocean of a pier towards land, and it's dated, and it says it's Laguna, and it's dated 1871. Have you ever heard of that? I mean, it's unbelievable. It's ob obviously a much older pier, and it does certainly look like our land. Well, whenever anyone asks about historic photo photographs of Laguna Beach or Orange County, we always tell them that the best collection is First American Title. Uh, as uh, Foster and I were working on the book, uh, we went up and spent an afternoon at uh, First American Title, and it's a great collection. Uh, but they uh, tell us that whatever information they have uh, is inferior to what we have. So okay, uh, we good. do have it on our to-do list uh, to try to share information because they have like a uh, person in Laguna Beach, you know, and it's uh, Percy Wise Clarkson. We know it's Percy Wise Clarkson, but they don't know who it is. So uh, uh, if, if, we, if we last here, uh, we'll, we'll try to share that information. It's a great collection. And if you're from Placentia or Buena Park or whatever, uh, you make an appointment, you go up there, there's a volunteer. What's the volunteer's name? We, we, we it's have Bob. him in our acknowledgments in, in our book because he was very helpful. And uh, you can go up there and you can e either order prints or you can order a digital copy, uh, which we did uh, a, a number of prints. Thanks, Sonny. You're welcome. So here's the other side of uh, the main beach pier. Uh, by the way, though, uh, formerly on the board of uh, Laguna Beach Historical Society is J.J. Gasparotti. Uh, Roger W. Jones said four piers. J.J. Uh, 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 believes there were seven piers. So, you know, there were, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, like uh, walking piers where you had uh, like a, a swing out, uh, things like that. So the second main beach pier lasted from 1926 to 1939. It was built in 1926 by Tony Durkham from Heisler Point, where now is the gazebo, out beyond Bird Rock measuring 1,150 feet. Now the so-called hurricane of 1939 destroyed it. Well, actually before uh, the series of tro four tropical storms in 1939, the uh, pier was already severely damaged, but in any event, it had to be demolished. So today, despite seven miles of coastline, we have no pier. At low tide, you can, you can hunt around down here and find out and actually see the holes where the pilings were put in. They had to be blasted away. I think uh, Gene Jantz, Gene Jantz is uh, relative as part of making some of those. Well, uh, uh, Nick Ish, Oscar Waring with this, you know, this tremendous... Uh, hundred dollars from uh, from uh, James Irvine the second they bought off the, all the material I, I don't know what they go out there dynamite and uh, uh, built a pier in 1896 but this is the 1926 pier this is uh, approved by the Department of War they got approval to build this hmm. pier prior to that they didn't ask okay does anybody know how to spell the woman's club <laughs> We're going to settle that uh, tonight. <laughs> this is up where uh, Victor Hugo's Las Brisas uh, uh, restaurants and um, the historic photo. So here's uh, Foster's current photo. Here they are together. The Woman's Club, W-O-M-A-N, not W-O-M-E-N. Yeah, we know maybe it should be, but it's not. 
So the Women's Club at what is now Las Brisas Restaurant at 361 Cliff Drive, it was built in 1938, the Victor Hugo Inn. It was founded by Hugo Adelitas and later owned by Marcel Langlois. The Women's Club of Laguna Beach was founded in 1922 to benefit the residents of Laguna Beach through philanthropic activities. Easy for me to say. Their headquarters was the old ranch house. Where was the old ranch house? Right here, City Hall. And, uh, they, uh, and it, was, uh, it hosted the Fest of the Arts in 1937 and 1938. And then, in the 1950s, the city of Laguna Beach went to the Distinguished Women's Club and said, we want your land. They threatened eminent domain. Anyway, they finally got a settlement where they... Um, uh, they, they sold the property to the city, but of course they got a lot of money for it. What about twenty-six thousand dollars? And uh, the new clubhouse for the women's club is at two eighty-six St. Ann Street. Oh, can you go back on it just for a second? Just to give you a little perspective on the next slide, that building right there, you'll see again in the next picture. Memorize that building. <laughs> okay, anybody can identify this. Uh, a uh, well-known uh, restaurant that recently closed here in Laguna Beach, California. What? The Cottage Restaurant. So this, uh, uh, this is a, uh, a Van Sinkle uh, house. Uh, here's the current uh, photo. So back here is the uh, Cottage Restaurant, which recently closed. Here they are together. Uh, so what our point of our book is many things have remained the same. Uh, and many things have changed. In the center of both uh, pictures is the Van Sickle home built in 1917, later the Cottage Restaurant, 1964 to uh, 2013. That is, it just closed this year. At the corner of Astor Street and North Coast Highway. Actually, uh, during the course of its history, this building was once um, uh, uh, owned and lived in by uh, Joe Skidmore who was the uh, stepson of Nate Brooks. And at that time, he named the, uh, the, uh, the building Sans Souci, without stress. So it's not currently taken, so you can name your own house when you go home tonight, Sans Souci. Um, it's hard to believe that there was no Coast Highway into 1926 connecting Newport Beach with Laguna Beach. This is now Cal California Highway 1. Uh, in 1926, they built a one lane in each direction and oiled it. 1932, they widened it to two lanes in each direction and paved it. Here is uh, the Coast Highway uh, uh, in, in October of uh, 1926, uh, the big dedication. This is around Boat Canyon. So here's uh, Foster's uh, current photo. Here they are together, 1926, the new state highway near Boat Canyon. Note the significant grading required. That's a pretty good cut, huh? Uh, until then, the only way you could get in and out of Laguna was by boat or by Laguna Canyon Road or Aliso Canyon. Uh, the city of Laguna Beach, being no dummies, let the state pay for it in 1926, will incorporate in 1927. Uh, here's a photo that's not in the book. Uh, we have a number of things we threw in for the added enjoyment of those in attendance. And um, so the, the dedication took place October 9th, 1926. Uh, 1926. And uh, this is not Douglas Fairbanks Jr. This is Douglas Fairbanks. And this is Thomas A. Cummings, who the next year would become the first mayor of Laguna Beach. Mary Pickford. And this gentleman is Percy Wise Clarkson, who is the, uh, uh, the bishop who built the cathedral, St. Francis by the Sea. This is uh, the main beach area. Here's Foster's current photo. Uh, this photo of this diner appeared in Claire Vogel's book, also by Acard uh, Arcadia Publishing. Uh, the images of Laguna Beach. Bruno Fulvio and his brother Dave came to Laguna to open their restaurant, which became Laguna Diner. 
Although the dining car restaurant located on Main Beach was only around for about five years, many celebrities graced its tables. It is said that Laguna local and actress Betty Davis often came for their great chili. So uh, currently, uh, back here, this is Greeter's Corner. You know, we only have two statues in Laguna Beach. Both of them are of the Greeter, Isla Larson. One here at Greeter's Corner, the other one down at uh, what was the Pottery Shack. So that's at 329 South Coast Highway. Oh, could you go back? Back in high school, I had a real good friend named Mike Trainer. Some of you guys in high school remember him. He passed away a little while back. Mike had a, his parents had a diner that looked an awful lot like that diner. It was out on Mountain Avenue. And Robin Williams and I used to go in there and get hamburgers, and I remember that. I don't know if they owned it. I don't know if it was the same diner, but since I saw this diner, I'm thinking there's probably only one diner like that in Laguna, and it ended up there. And after that, I don't know what happened to it. I'm thinking it's in somebody's backyard somewhere in Laguna, but uh, anybody know who that diner is? Yeah. Uh, who knows about the diners? <laughs> oh, really? Gee. Yeah, Jerry. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. So did it look like that did, as you, from your memory? Hello? <laughs> Trainer's Diner looked like that, but, you know, I, I don't know if that's the same one or not, but it, uh, it's very similar. It was, it was on Mountain Road and Coast Highway. Yeah, yeah. Set back a little ways from the highway. Disappeared off the face of the earth. Here's a historic photo. Now, uh, did I mention in our book we, we say uh, much has changed, but much, much has re remained the same? And so this particular spot, is this Diver's Cove? Diver's Cove. Um, did anything change? <laughs> Oh. So here they are together, Divers Cove compared uh, in the 1920s photo to the now photo with a substantial condominium project. Uh, Claire Vogel writes that the area is home to many small sharks and rays as well as visiting sea lion. Uh, there's good, apparently very good beach access on the north side by that condominium. Uh, 50 step, four landing staircase leading down to the sandy beach uh, 40 feet below. From the foot of the stairs, the reef is northwest or just in front of the point. <laughs> now, I stole this image from the internet. I thought it'd be interesting what the condominium project said about themselves. <laughs> so they said, Divers Cove, the view from 30, uh, 361 Cliff Drive, fabulous location at the North uh, Laguna Divers Cove area on the ocean side of Cliff Drive, strategically perched over the uh, ocean and beach with convenient access to beach popular for swimming, sunbathing, diving, and paddle boarding, convenient to all that Laguna Beach has to offer, including Heisler Park, restaurants, shopping, art galleries, art and craft festivals, fabulous beaches, and much more. So when was that condominium project built? I was trying to figure it out. We have this booklet, uh, uh, there it is, a, su a substantial, it looks even bigger from an aerial view. Uh, you know, the then and now photos, we have a lot of great aerial photos, and I asked Foster if he would please take a current photo of some of these, and he was of no help whatsoever. Uh, we even got a Groupon for a helicopter ride, and I sent it to him. So uh, does anybody know when this uh, condominium project was built? Uh, this is a, a Coves of Lo Go ahead. Are they privately owned? Yeah, condo. Who had enough influence to allow them to build there in the first place? Yeah. At this point, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have Art Sherman, class of 1937, asking a question. <laughs> Hi, Art. Hi. Is it class of 37? The class of Laguna Beach High School, class of 1937, was the first Laguna Beach High School football team to win the league championship. And uh, yeah, let's hear it for the Laguna Beach High School class of 1937. <laughs> 
They were already artists. Okay, uh, we mentioned earlier that uh, the, the names of the coves uh, sometimes change. And of course, Boat Canyon and Fisherman's Cove is the same thing. Uh, anybody know where Cat Rock is? So, um, of course, uh, Laguna Federal Savings uh, had their big uh, headquarters where the Wells Fargo Bank is right now on Ocean Avenue in 1961. Uh, I was talking to uh, people who moved uh, to Laguna Beach about that time, and they thought that this was probably, this condominium project was probably built in the 50s. But they didn't know. Uh, in the book, there's two photographs of Divers Coast from different perspectives that are not the same as one I showed you up here. This is a variation of that. Here's the Yacht Laguna Beach Hotel. Here's the Hotel Laguna. According to the June 1995 booklet, The Glorious Fourth of Old Laguna by Laguna Beach Historical Society board member Jane Petty Jance, quote, during the winter, the town was wonder wonderfully quiet, but during the summer months, the population swelled so much so that around 1895, Joe and Kate Yock bought an abandoned hotel and did the first recorded renovation job starting the Laguna Beach Hotel, and the rest is history. So about six years prior, uh, uh, the Yocks had built a small cottage on the beachfront, and they got together with the other cottage owners uh, in that row and built the boardwalk. So that dates to uh, 1889 or so. Oh, on this, uh, this uh, uh, let, let's, let's go back so we can really show it here. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay, point it out now, Foster. Uh, this house here, uh, of, we sent uh, Foster out to take a current photo of. So, uh, uh, well, let me just mention the, uh, the information we have uh, is the Yacht Laguna Beach Hotel was a combination of the Arch Beach Hotel, which was bu built by Hubbard Goff in 1886, about the corner of what is now Diamond Street and Coast Highway. Yacht combined this hotel with uh, Hubbard's brother, Henry Goff's Alpha Hotel. In 1928, the Laguna Beach Hotel was condemned and demolished in 1929. The large building above it to the right is the historic Old Captain's Home. Preservationists saved this home from destruction by moving to a lot close to the intersections of Catalina and Cleo Streets. It's more, uh, more Catalina and Arroyo, I think it's Arroyo Grande. Is that right? Okay. And I, I've looked at the picture of this up here uh, in higher magnification and compared to this one here, and it's almost perfectly identical. Looks to me like they just preserved literally every single part of it. Including the orientation. Including the orientation. Here's a historic photo. Here's looking down at the Community Presbyterian Church. And uh, so what we want to talk about is uh, this building here, Laguna Chapel, the little brown church, is at the right of the trees. The path uh, off of Forest Avenue is 2nd Street, now the site of the Community Presbyterian Church, built in 1928. From the church's website in 1914, with the support of the townspeople, uh, the pastor oversaw the construction of Laguna Chapel, which would become known as the Little Brown Church, built downtown on two second street lots costing $250 each, highway, highway robbery. It was dedicated on August 29th, 1915. And uh, so that was built 1914, 1915. And then uh, uh, within a decade, they built this wonderful large uh, community Presbyterian Church. In 1925, the pastor was Raymond I. Brahms, and he saw his dream uh, realized building in 1928 the sanctuary as it exists today for $26,500. And he proposed the Spanish col uh, colonial architecture and oversaw the design process. Um, can you go back on that just for a second? The location of the now photograph is a well-kept secret to only to me because I was doing something illegal to get that picture. <laughs> I, 
I, when I saw this photograph and I figured out approximately where it would be, uh, there were the churches there, of course, and I thought, well, whatever location was there for the original photograph is long since gone, but I decided to go up there and look around. And as it turned out, I found a place where I could climb on top of the roof of one of the smaller buildings, which I did, and I kept thinking that while I was up there taking a picture that somebody's going to come yelling at me. Never happened. I went back there actually on a separate, uh, separate shoot to get a better picture because for the weather conditions itself. But as it turned out, the location to me is almost perfectly identical to where the original was taken. So I'm thinking maybe that this was taken while the church was there at a higher location where the church, the first church was there before it was taken down. Excuse me. So it, it uh, Foster took this from the area of uh, St. Mary's Episcopal Church, taking the photo of downtown uh, of the uh, community Presbyterian Church, and his attention to detail in all these photos, trying to get the topography uh, to be as close as possible. I think he did a pretty good job. <laughs> Uh, this is looking down on uh, Forest Avenue, and what we'll be talking about particularly is this building, uh, the Laguna Lumberyard uh, office and hardware store. Although, wait a second, let's, uh, what else we got there? So you notice here we have the pier out here. It's after 1928 because the Presbyterian Church is there. The Laguna Playhouse, built I think in 1926, is over here. But all of this is all kinds of boards stacked up because it's a working, functioning uh, lumber yard. So here's, uh, here's Foster's current uh, photo. The pier is gone. Uh, the uh, Presbyterian Church is still there. And down here in the corner is the Laguna Lumber Company office and a hardware store. Here they are together. Uh, this information is from the uh, city's uh, historic resource inventory. The, now it's the Laguna Lumberyard restaurant. The Norman styled building was the home of Laguna Beach Lumber from 1919 to 1975. The business is the oldest continuous business in the city. Elmer E. Jarris moved to Laguna Beach in 1902, and if you can believe this, opened a cigar factory. His son in 1912, Joseph, organized a lumber company on the site, which is now 384 Forest Avenue. Until the lumber yard was open, wood for construction was either floated in from ships or hauled by mule down Laguna Canyon. So it was essential for the growth of the city to get a source of lumber. However, when they opened, uh, other lumber store uh, companies also opened in town. People, according to the historic resource inventory, people in a 50-mile radius, particularly in Pasadena and Riverside, began to buy land in Laguna for summer beach cottages. In 1975, the Laguna Beach Lumber moved their operations to Laguna Canyon, and then they sold it to the Jarris family, sold it to the Gunnell Lumber in 2001. The former offices was the house of the Ivy House restaurant. The building was designed by local architect Jan Igaze in a style that was reflecting the French building seen by Joseph Jarris during World War I. This is the aerial photo. I said, Foster, would you please... <laughs> take a current photo of this for us. But uh, here we have uh, uh, the fire, fire department, the Laguna Lumberyard uh, uh, office and hardware store is here. I guess this is the, uh, that's my cuff. Uh, this is the Presbyterian Church. Over here is uh, the Laguna Playhouse. So this is Ocean Avenue, Forest Avenue, from Beach up to Forest Avenue. And uh, uh, this is uh, before uh, City Hall is built in here. So it's, yes? 1924 Playhouse was a, a, a really a very nice building for the was really a, a very nice building for the age of the town. It really seems there must be a story behind how that such a nice building got built at that time for the, for the and it was more than just the Laguna Playhouse. I think, is, is Jane here tonight? Jane's here. I think, didn't you tell me, Jane, that that was where your mother played bridge? 
That's where everybody in town played bridge. Well, other people. It was people the, were... called the community club, and they started early. And the bridge was a big part. It was just a community place for people to get together. The locals wanted to put on plays, and so that became the start of what we call today Laguna Playhouse. But it was started as part of the community club. Ah. Uh. And that building was built as a community club. It was quite a nice building. It was. Well, what we have here in Laguna Beach, if you drive into town, it will say uh, home of the Festival of the Arts and the uh, pageant of the Masters. So uh, the visual arts, particularly when you have the Laguna Art Museum, but I think Skip's making a very good point that the history in Laguna Beach, uh, Beach of the performing arts uh, is, is as, as much uh, as impressive. Uh, here's a photo of the, uh, the Ivy House. Uh, later, it was the Cedar, Cedar Creek uh, restaurant, and now is the Laguna Lumber Yard restaurant. Uh, here is indeed the uh, Laguna Playhouse. Uh, Foster and I argued about uh, what uh, photo to use for this presentation, so we figured, what the heck, we'll use both. No. This one I like. We got this, uh, Sonny, from First American Title. I had never seen it before. This is Ocean Avenue, the Laguna Playhouse, and then on Forest Avenue at Second Street, the Presbyterian uh, Community Church. I don't think the street is paved. You know what I mean? Uh, now, this is not exactly a wonderful story, but uh, this is Foster's uh, now photo, a parking lot. <laughs> Way to go, Foster. <laughs> You can see in here, though, the, the steeple somewhere. Here is the uh, community Presbyterian church, but the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, Laguna Playhouse is, uh, was demolished. Here's the information that we have. This is from the Laguna Playhouse website. Uh, the Laguna Playhouse was launched in a living room. That's right. On October 22, 1920, a group of dedicated local drama devotees got together and decided it was time to establish, establish a community theater in Laguna Beach. The Playhouse, built in 1924, 319 Ocean Avenue, at a cost of $5,000. During the Great Depression, unfortunately, the theater was sold to the city and leased back by the company. During World War II, the Playhouse offered entertainment for the troops and hosted USO dances and other activities. Uh, this thing of a nonprofit selling their property to the city, uh, the reason to do that is the nonprofit couldn't afford to pay the property taxes and the city would not have to pay them. So then they work out a deal. So there's the uh, then and now. Okay. Foster wanted his in, so we got Foster's then and now. Uh, we, we got information from a 1950 uh, Festival of the Arts program which uh, talked about uh, performing arts. Of all the arts, perhaps the theater is the most complex, combining as it does writing, acting, architecture, costuming, and staging. Laguna Beach, famous for its artists, is also famous for its theater. Besides uh, church and school groups, Laguna has three theatrical organizations, the Community Players, the 35 Prompters, and Summerstock, uh, unquote. And then what happened, uh, they demolished this building in 1969, but at the same time they built at 606 Laguna Canyon Road, the Molten Playhouse. Uh, so the site of the original playhouse is now a parking lot. However, it does include the original playhouse call board, and they saved a pepper tree. The call board is about right there, and the pepper tree is there. The reason I wanted him to show this pic particular picture, because that's how I remember it when I was back in high school, and my father, Ray Eubank, was involved with the playhouse. He was in some of the plays, and uh, I think he even directed some plays there. But he invited me in on several occasions to meet some of the uh, actors that were playing in the stock there. And at the time, I met Burl Ives, Robert Stack, Marshall Thompson, Richard Anderson, Art Smith, Hayden Rourke. Those are the ones that come to mind. Some of those may ring a bell with you. Uh, maybe they don't. <laughs> but I always, always remember how much fun it was to be involved with that, even though I didn't get involved in any of the plays. Well, I can name the drop, too. Oh. Um, okay, maybe I can't. But David's, of course. No, I, I recognize all those names. They're great ones. Here's a historic photo along Main Beach. 
Here's the uh, current photo. Here they are together. The then photograph from about 1915 shows left to right the Nate Brooks home. The pavilions is the two-story building. And at the right, the uh, Yacht, Joseph Yacht Laguna Beach Hotel. According to the Cal State Fullerton Oral History by Burl Wilson Vebeck, she said that her, uh, I think it's great, great, great uncle, George Rogers, he subdivided downtown Laguna Beach and he sold this lot to Nate Brooks for 50 bucks. <laughs> the now photographs show the main beach with a modern lifeguard stand and of course the uh, iconic uh, lifeguard stand. And at the right, way over here, is the Hotel Laguna, which was built in 1930. So there and now. This is the lifeguard stand when it was a, um, uh, this is how the lifeguard stand began as the office in a, uh, in a gas station, uh, pretty much at the corner of South Coast Highway and Broadway. Uh, here's Foster's uh, beautiful picture, Foster, of the uh, Union Gas Station today. Uh, from the Laguna Magazine, they had a very nice article in spring 2008 by Michaela Myers. Quote, if there is a single icon for the city of Laguna Beach, I believe it would have to be the main beach tower. She didn't say that. That was uh, by Dale Gare. Is Dale here? He's right here. He was a lifeguard from 1960 to 1974, and since Dale's stint as a lifeguard, all rookie Laguna lifeguards began under supervision at Main Beach, where the tower is used as a training headquarters. The tower originally served as the offices for the Union Oil Gas Station. The gas station was located on what is now the corner of Broadway and Coast Highway. When the station went out of business during the Depression, the tower got a second lease on life on Main Beach, where it was moved in March of 1937. Wally Bud Kerrigan remembers how telephone pole logs were cut to the length of the street so the tower could be rolled one block to its new location. Here's the uh, corner of uh, Forest Avenue and uh, South Coast Highway, circa 1935. Here's Foster's uh, current uh, photograph. The businesses are removed uh, from Main Beach Park. Here's the uh, lifeguard uh, stand. Here's the information that we have, once again, from uh, Burl Wilson Vebeck's oral history. Uh, Aura and Oscar Warling uh, own that corner there at Forest and Coast Highway, and a very nice coffee shop type restaurant was built there. It was called the Sandwich Mill and was located to Mrs. Florence Irons. So this is the Sandwich Mill right here. Uh, that's where Aunt Aura and Uncle Oscar had moved in 1915. In 1926, a bank land leased that ground for 99 years and had an option to buy. When the Depression was over, they had an early option. The bank bought the lots for a song. Before the bank, the state of California came through and widened Coast Highway and needed more space. The Warlings owned a lot at, they also owned a lot at Glen Airy and Diamond, and they gave the state the land here at Forest and Coast Highway if they would just move their house. They lived in Laguna Beach from 1895 when they got married until 1954 when Aunt Ora died. Later, this corner was the Bank of America, and currently it's the Finger Hut Gallery at 210 Forest Avenue. Uh, I suppose... Oh, excuse me. Go ahead. Let's see. One of the one of the daughters married Abe Johnson, and uh, yeah, but they're definitely related to George Rogers, no question. Uh, so uh, when George Rogers uh, and his family moved back to Kirksville, Missouri, uh, the Warrings purchased the house, the old ranch inn, and lived, it, lived in it for a number of years. Most of the uh, now photographs that I took, I tried to get away from taking them during the summer because uh, that would be impossible to get that clear during the summer. It's just, it's just ridiculous there. 
So I Sir, got that, in the way. That, just... that appears to be photoshopped to me. <laughs> it really wasn't. I just just sat there for about, maybe about a half hour just waiting for the lights to work together to stop the traffic. And I thought, wow, this is really fortunate to get that because it shows how open it is. Uh, they're actually starting to build something down there in the, on the main beach there. They're doing some construction work down there, but that building right there was in the shadow, so it doesn't show, which I was grateful for. That was very late in the afternoon. You can see the shadows coming in, so the sun is sitting. It's probably, I'm just guessing it's around 5 o'clock. That's the best time for lighting. At least a lot well, of cars were here. going and coming, but Foster got a brief moment, and he took this photo. Very good. Uh, here's uh, this is uh, Laguna Laguna Avenue, right next to uh, the uh, Hotel Laguna Beach. This isn't in the book. Here, uh, here it is. Uh, Foster's current one. You have a uh, uh, the Heisler Building across the street. Let's go back here and see what. Here, here is the old uh, post office across the street. Here's what we got to say about it. Are there more cars in the 1920 <laughs> photo or now? <laughs> this is a photo looking east along the Laguna Avenue. The then photo is 1923 or before, as across the street is the Nickish old post office. The now photo shows the restored Heisler building across the street from the Hotel Laguna. Here's a historic photo. Let's see, has much changed? There you go. Here they are together. The 1916, uh, when this photograph was taken, uh, South Coast High was, was a dirt road and followed the contours of the land. The same location was depicted in a famous 1916 oil painting by William Went titled The Old Coast Road. Today, the expansion and grading of South Coast Highway has dramatically altered the area. I honestly did not, I thought that this photograph was taken further down the road there. Moss Street would be right down in there, in that general area there. It was Jane and I discussed this back and forth, and she directed me to the better location further up here. I was still somewhat uh, concerned about the fact that the slope here was been cut. It looked like it was about 30 feet high. So I'm guessing that where this picture was taken was about 20 feet, maybe 25 feet higher than where I'm standing right now. That's why the perspective looks different. Now you have to feel sorry for William Went painting this area with these ugly telephone poles. Except he uh, left them out. The 1916, when this photograph was taken, let's see, what, uh, I, I got a little copy and paste problem here. But anyway, it's the same location depicted uh, in the 1916 oil painting, William Went, titled The Old Coast Road. And if you have a copy of the book uh, uh, about Crystal Cove, uh, it's included in there. Uh, can, can you go back just, just, just for those who are interested, you can see the picture is a lot clearer in the book. I am guessing that Wentz House was about right there on Arch Street. Just looking at the corner of the, of the building that you can see there, it looks like, do we have that? We do indeed, sir. So we'll, we'll show you the house here. So he probably was, studio was about right there. Where's Rockledge, anybody know? It, it's it's a fur, further, a little, a, a little south of here according to Skip. Uh, this is, uh, what, Broadview Villa. Uh, we're corrected that it's Pine Castle. Uh, according to Karen Wilson Turnbull in her book, uh, 1987 book, The Cottages and Castles of Laguna, quote, the foremost Norman style estate in Laguna Beach is what is known as Pine Castle, originally called Broadview Villa. Well, how do you know we're both right? Uh, the 62-room castle was built by Wa uh, Walter Estelle Pine. He was originally the owner of a piano company who owned some land in Olive. The land was rich in oil, and he soon became a millionaire, earning about $1,000 a day. Now, let's see. There's 365 days a year times 1,000. What is that? $365,000 a year in the 1920s. Holy moly. And he only became a millionaire. 
According to Merle Ramsey, uh, it took seven years in the building. The beginning of the construction was February, 90, uh, February 1927, so I guess they weren't finished until 1934. Uh, Mr. Pine lived in Laguna Beach for 23 years and died on July 22nd, 1945, of cancer. Now, uh, we, uh, we asked uh, Foster to line up the photos exactly, but he's a little skittish about private property and getting arrested, so this was the best he could do. Um, Although they, they were very cooperative, weren't they? Were, they? Uh, Mrs. Nelson was there. She invited me in and showed me around the grounds. And I realized that taking the now photograph was not going to be possible from the same location that the original was taken. I, for the life of me, I don't know how this was taken because when I'm standing here taking the picture and looking back, there wasn't any raised area there, so it's evidently really been graded. It's one of these pairs that we didn't put in the book and then and now. The then is in the book, but not the now. This is the Hotel Laguna before the sign ordinance. This is the Hotel Laguna, uh, uh, Foster Eubanks uh, photo. Here's the information we have from the pioneer days in Laguna Beach, Merle and Mabel Ramsey. In 1930, a group of businessmen headed by B.O. Miller of Los Angeles purchased the property for the sum of $84,000. So the, the, uh, if you recall, the Hotel Laguna Beach was condemned in 1928, demolished in 1929. The Depression was taking its toll. Soon the property reverted to the Miller Group who owned the land. And from the historic resource inventory, this is of course at 425 South Coast Highway, the architectural style is Mission Revival. So quote, Lloyd and Gerda Sealset uh, bought it and resurrected the business. They compiled an album of Laguna scenes and promoted the hotel to motion picture companies. The price of lodging was so low compared to other film locations and Laguna Beach terrain so varied and adaptable to movie making, the filmmakers arrived in droves and the hotel was in the black again in no time. So we don't know if that's really true, but that's what Merle Ramsey wrote in 1967. Uh, one of our uh, Laguna Beach Historical Society members, uh, Fred Crosby, sent us in a photo of uh, Goethe uh, Sealset, uh, this painting of her. We haven't had an opportunity to show it, so I thought I'd put it in the PowerPoint. Uh, this is the White House restaurant uh, looking south on uh, Coast Highway. Boy, those trees are taking over that road, huh? Here's uh, Foster's uh, photo. You got the Hotel Laguna in the, in the right there, and the White House restaurant is in here. Here's the information we have from the Historic Resource Inventory. Uh, the White House Cafe was first located in the older of the two buildings, 300, 320 South Coast Highway. Uh, so up towards, towards the corner. Uh, it was built in 1918 by Claude Bronner proprietor of the restaurant. The restaurant did well from the start and was later expanded by the second owner, Richard Byrd, in 1934. Why would he expand in 1934? That's right, because Prohibition was repealed in 1933 to make the tavern. At that time, a tavern and bar were added so that the restaurant ex extended the entire length from 300 to 340 uh, South Coast Highway. The White House Cafe now occupies only the latter addition to the building and the restaurant and bar have been consolidated into one building. Second owner Richard Byrd bought the White House Cafe in 1926 for the astronomical sum of $86,000. They say that Bronner, Claude Bronner wasn't interested in selling, he just made up a number so high he knew the guy couldn't pay and he paid in cash. <laughs> Uh, this is uh, the corner of Ocean, uh, Ocean Avenue in uh, South Coast Highway. And uh, you'll have to trust me, but this is the uh, real estate offices of Gavi Cravath. And Gavi is spelled G-A-V-Y. G-A-V-Y, not two V's, not an R thrown in someplace, G-A-V-Y. Here's the current uh, photo. Here's our information. So the building is still there. 
look pretty much the same. One's in color, one's black and white. Not too many differences. I guess the uh, telephone poles are underground. Now Fiori, featuring Italian ceramics at 214 South Coast Highway at Ocean Avenue, was the real estate offices of Gavi Cravath. Uh, Clifford Carlton Cravath, he lived from 1881 and died in 1963. Quote, his 24 homers in 1915 was the 20th century ma major league record. Who beat his record? Babe Ruth hit 29 home runs in 1919. One of the sport's top power hitters in the dead ball era, in the seven years from 1913 to 1920, he led the National League in home runs six times. So in seven years, he was the home run leader six out of seven years. Uh, Ramsey writes in Pioneer Days, quote, For many years he served as Justice of the Peace. He was admired for his consideration of the younger set. When, he, when they ran afoul of the law, rather than incarcerate them, he gave them some fatherly advice, sent them home many times, ending up by laughing with them. Uh, can you go back to his When I went back to get the now photograph, I, want, I went back to this location several times. I want to get the lighting on both sides of the building. It was only when I took a series of pictures and went back and looked at them that I realized that there were two people standing here Exactly like two people standing here. I thought, well, that's the picture. <laughs> so, Jane, who, who are they? Is it Doc Mallard and who else? It's, uh, they've got it written down anyway in the Murphy Smith bungalow who the two people in the historic photos uh, were. So, uh, thanks to Andy McMillan, we have photos of uh, Justice of the Peace, uh, Cravath, and when he played for the Philadelphia Phillies as a major league ball player. Uh, the story is that he, play, he played for a long time. It took him a long time to get to the major leagues. He played in the P Pacific Coast uh, League, I think, for S San Diego. He hit the ball so hard, one time it hit a seagull and it died. And uh, they say, I don't know if it's really true, Spanish for seagull is uh, gaviota. And so the, the crowd started yelling, Gavi, Gavi, Gavi. And that's how he got the nickname, <laughs> Gavi Cravath. He could really sting that ball. <laughs> But his importance to Laguna Beach is really water. Gavi was, was uh, as much a part of Laguna as the ocean and the climate. Being on the water board for many years, the city is now reaping much of the harvest from his efforts. He was influential in obtaining adequate, adequate water for many years to come. What was he willing to do to get us adequate water? Well, according to Merle and Mabel Ramsey in the first hundred years of Laguna Beach, the yes votes, quote, Laguna Beach has a habit of voting yes. In 1889, when a vote was taken for establishing the County of Orange, Laguna Beach cast 36 yes votes and zero no votes. When voting in 1926 for the $600,000 water bonds, Laguna Beach voted 437 yes and zero no's. This was the only election in history with a unanimous yes vote for that many of votes. Laguna Beach has done many things different. Well, what are the facts of the 437 yes votes? The pump at Aliso Canyon had been abandoned as the water had turned brackish. Sometime after the pump was turned off, it was Gavi Cravath, the justice of the peace, who revealed what really happened. About two days before the election, he sneaked down and turned on the pump, filling the pipes with brackish water. The people were trying to use it. Came voting day, they all voted yes. 430 votes for the $600,000 water bonds for Huntington Beach water. Unfortunately, we, uh, we, we got water from Huntington Beach for quite a number of years, uh, 10 or 20 years, something. But then the water of uh, Huntington Beach also went salty. So today, Laguna Beach, this is as of 1967, Laguna Beach drinks and uses the water from the Metropolitan Water District. The water company, well, as of 1967, 1967, the Laguna Beach County Water District owned that property in Huntington Beach, and then they struck oil. But I think they finally have uh, sold it. Anyway, that's uh, Gavi Cravath in the corner of uh, Ocean and South Coast Highway. Now, this is a photo we have in the Murphy Smith bungalow, uh, in, um, in, uh, 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 and it's noted that it was raining on 4th of July, 1928. 
Here's the current photo with the lifeguard stand in the main beach park and the window to the sea. Here's the information we have. According to Laguna Beach Historical Society board member Jane Jans, the broiler wasn't built until 1935, so the July 4th, 1928 date cannot be correct. The 1930s historic photo shows the broiler restaurant at 201 South Coast Highway, right here. And then over here we have the Donut Kettle next door. The Foster Eubank photo, now photo, shows buildings being removed as the city of Laguna Beach purchased in 1968 a thousand feet of this ocean front being Laguna's window to the sea. The businesses operated for the next five years but then were removed with the main beach park dedication July 22nd, 1974. The mayor at the time, Roy Holm, and some of his friends livened up the festivities by parachute, parachuting onto Main Beach from a plane piloted by the astronaut Gordon Cooper. And then 30 years later, the bonds were paid off. Uh, they were paid off with revenue from the lease payments from the Fest of the Arts, and a bond burning ceremony was held October 1st, 1998. This pair is not in the book because. This photograph here is the only one I think they have at the Historical Society. And Arcadia Publications uh, has a very strict criteria for the resolution of pictures. And that just didn't meet it. I really wanted it to be in there because I remember so much back in my high school days, this particular location. But it just, the uh, resolution of that picture just wasn't good enough to be in the book. So if you have a, uh, a good resolution photo of this, uh, we'll write another book. <laughs> Here's another photo that we have where the first one says the broiler, this one says Big Jim's broiler. Anybody recognize anybody in the picture? That's what I look like. <laughs> uh, here's uh, uh, Victor Hugo in. Here's the current photo of it. Okay, uh, thanks for asking. Uh, across the street where I'm standing right now is a stairwell of a private apartment building. And fortunately, the gate was open, so I just went in and went up the stairwell and took the picture. <laughs> I, I, I would always do that and, uh, and answer questions later if they came out and got on my case. But as you can see, this particular location that I took this picture is much higher than the original picture. Uh, because if I was take the picture at a lower, uh, lower part of the stairwell, there was a large amount of vegetation here which just blocked out the picture. So I had to go higher up and to the left. So this picture is not quite comparable to the other one. This one also is not in the book. And uh, you didn't wait for the cars to leave. Uh, true. <laughs> Here's the information we have from the uh, historic resource inventory, 361 Cliff Drive, uh, the Victor Hugo Inn built in 1938. Quote, what was the Victor Hugo Inn from the time it was built until 1979 is now the Las Brisas restaurant. The building is situated on a sloping bluff and maximizes the panoramic ocean vista by incorporating a patio seating area and two large circular wings. I I've heard that it's good for a margarita at uh, sunset time. The restaurant was founded by Hugo Adelitas, who arrived in Laguna Beach in 1938 after going bust in Los Angeles during the Depression. He formerly owned a restaurant by the name of Victor Hugo's in Los Angeles, which he sold prior to coming south. Immediately upon completion, Victor Hugo's became a popular landmark restaurant. Movie stars, dignitaries, and the rich have all dined at Victor Hugo's over the years. Here's a Smith Construction. Uh, what is it? This is at the uh, South Coast Highway, 11 Brooks. Uh, Brook Street at 1183 South Coast Highway. Sam Piper. Sam Piper Inn. <laughs> also good for uh, a margarita. Uh, currently, the English Garden, uh, for some reason, it's a different address, 1199 South Coast Highway. There's the then and now. Uh, this is an Aubrey St. Clair design. Uh, the construction date, 1937. Uh, the Smith brothers built their own headquarters. Aubrey St. Clair is the architect. This Tudor Revival building was originally built by the Smith, Smith brothers to house their contracting firm. Local architect Aubrey St. Clair also ha housed his practice here. 
The Smith brothers were a prominent and prosperous contracting firm in Laguna. They were responsible for the execution of many large ventures in the city as well as for residential homes. They enjoyed their heyday during the era of the period revival architecture and many of the homes and buildings with which they were involved were constructed in the Tudor revival and Normandy revival styles, styles like their own building. This is the Coast Inn. Notice it's got a nice turret up here, which somehow Foster missed. <laughs> uh, Coast Inn, 1401 South Coast Highway and Mountain Street. The turrets are gone. Uh, of all things, this is an article from the New York Times, so I don't know if this is true. He wrote about the Coast Inn Boom Boom Room, uh, October 9th, uh, 2009. Uh, built in 1927, that's when a man named John, John Pappy Smith opened the Coast Inn in Laguna Beach. An adjoining bar and restaurant originally called the Seven Seas, Pappy was no marketing maven, was nicknamed the Boom Boom Room by sailors and marines who used the haunt, the hatch, used, used the haunt to hatch li liaisons. Boom Boom was then sailor speak for sex. Later during the Vietnam War, a boom boom came to mean a brief encounter with a local prostitute. <laughs> By the late 1970s, after a change of owners, the boom boom had already established a reputation as a legendary gay bar playing happy host to Bette Midler, Rock Hudson, and Martha Ray. Boom boom room. I hung out there in 1968 before this happened, but it was a great place, great place to hang out. Here's three women on a rock. Here's the rock currently without the three women. Who are those women? Good question. In the early 1900s, these ladies, these ladies posed for a photograph above an opening in the rocks just prior to the Arch Beach Pier. It is from the uh, geologic formation that the name of the area, Arch Beach, most likely acquired its name. Uh, well, that's what Merle Ramsey agrees with in Pioneer Days. He wrote about William H. Brooks that in 1878 he married Anna Clapp. To them were born a daughter, Josephine, four sons, Walter, Robert, Clarence, and Roy. Mrs. Brooks was known as Aunt Annie, and it was she who named Arch Beach. Today the arch is found between Arch Beach below Pearl Street, seen in the background uh, the Woods Cove area. Erosion has altered the formation in over 100 years that have passed since the ladies had their photograph taken. Here is the Arch Beach Pier. And here is the current photograph. Here's the information we have, once again, from Roger W. Jones, the Laguna Beach and Illustrated Narrative History. Dating back to 1887, four piers were built in Laguna Beach within a span of 83 years. The first constructed in 1887 at Arch Beach, near the end of Diamond Street, by two homesteading farmers, Nate Brooks and Hubbard Goff. It was used primarily to load barley hay onto a schooner for shipments to San Diego for stagecoach runs into three states, Nevada, New Mexico, and Arizona. The pier was so short that it was often necessary to lighter the cargoes to, uh, to the schooner, which would be anchored out in the deeper waters. Guests of the Arch Beach Hotel also used the pier to fish or take an evening stroll. Oh, could you go back on that? In case you're wondering where this picture was taken, it's a small park at the end of Jade, is that called Jade Street? Jade. It's right after Ruby. Ruby, thank you very much. And there's a smaller park that ends right there, and that's where the picture was taken. The actual photograph itself was taken further up, the, up on, higher up on the bluff behind me, which is now private property. I'm guessing it was the Taylor home that was originally there in the bluff and up and to the left. So you can see that, like this rock here, is further out than this here, indicating that the picture was taken further up to the left. But you can still go down to this park to get a good, nice view of what this general area looks like. Now, uh, Foster, you've had a number of jobs as a youngster working in town. Did you ever work at the Arch Beach Hotel? <laughs> no? Not really. No. Oh, really? Foster <laughs> set pins in the bowling alley. <laughs> And he uh, recapped tires on Ocean Avenue in a garage. 
This picture, can you, oh, we'll sorry, get back one here. more thing. This picture here, we got, I got separately from uh, the University of Southern California archives, and it shows a lot more of the area back up in here. And uh, this got a lot of attention through Facebook. A lot of different people were commenting on that picture from a separate posting on it. And the Arch, Peach, Arch Hotel should have been a, somewhere right around in here. And in the larger picture, we couldn't really see it there. So we had a lot of discussion about when this picture was taken relative to where was the hotel and so forth. Because there really wasn't any other homes up here except, for, I think, for a Bradshaw home. Which you can see right, so there's an error in our book yeah. uh, that uh, we say it's the Arch Beach Hotel. A actually, it's a residential house, uh, the Bradshirt House, the uh, Bradshaw House, the first house in Arch Beach. Uh, Victor Victoria Tower then. Victoria Tower now. Here's some information we had. We had a program uh, a few years ago by Mark Whitman. Uh, he wrote a, a, a Laguna Home Companion for the Laguna Beach Independent, and in it he wrote, 1926, former California State Senator William Edward Brown and his wife Mary Eleanor built their summer home for, uh, from the heat and bustle of Beverly Hills on the bluffs overlooking v uh, Victoria Beach in the Pacific. To accommodate the sharp drop to the reef below, Senator Brown had a 60-foot Norman-style tower uh, built of reinforced concrete. Hidden inside was a, sp a spiral staircase that allowed the Brown family to move easily and safely from the top of the bluff to the rocks below. Later, Harold Kendrick, a retired naval officer, bought the Brown Seaside Summer Home. Known locally as the Question Man, Lieutenant Kendrick filled his seaside home with items of strange as cans of rattlesnake meat, a full suit of armor, a real shrunken head from South America, a pirate theme ruled the home, and Kendrick hosted games for local children. He constantly offered cash prizes to children who could correctly answer a never-ending series of questions with the right answer. Parties often ended with a search for cash and coins hidden in the crevices and cracks of the seaside tower. I lived out at Victoria Beach when this was all going on, and I remember Mr. Kendrick very clearly. He'd always be walking around, and you could hear the money jingling in his pockets. And, of course, when he approached him, there was always about four or five of us that would crowd around him, and he would ask uh, various types of questions that we would try to answer. The more difficult the question, the more money you got. But it was just a wonderful experience to know him. He would invite us into the home and uh, show us various things in the house itself. Here's another picture of uh, Victoria, the, the, the uh, Victoria Tower, which goes with the house, which is called the, the Norman House, which we cannot see. Just a little bit there. Oh, can you see a little bit? Just a little bit. Okay. So here's the uh, current uh, photo. And uh, next door, not part of this property, is a, uh, a pool that's built into the, uh, uh, into, into the, uh, the beach there. Is this Rockledge? Anybody know? Yes. Okay, that's Villa Rockledge. <laughs> Dr. Beebe's house. Ah, Beebe. In the book, by the way, the, there's a different variation on these in the pictures here. And in the book pictures, even older, this wading pool or swimming pool, if you want to call it that, was not there in the rocks when the picture that's in your book was taken. So it's a slightly different perspective, although the location for both now pictures was exactly the same. So here's some information from the historic resource inventory. Uh, the Norman House, they say the historic name is L Latour. This French provincial uh, revival house is uh, located along the bluff top above uh, Victoria Beach and is one of Laguna's most noted landmarks. The house is comprised of two structures, the main house on the bluff edge and a guest house off the street. In the early 1940s, when it was acquired by Harold Kendrick, a retired naval officer from Los Angeles, during the decades that Kendrick owned the house, he was thought to be as eclectic and fascinating as the buildings themselves. He dressed himself and the house in a pirate theme and was the attraction of all the local children. Kendrick had the house stocked full of games and puzzles, which the children played. Winners received coins from his bowl of... 
cold cash, which he kept in the refrigerator. <laughs> Finders were keepers. <laughs> uh, a Laguna Beach Historical Society member, uh, uh, Lindy Narver, sent us in this photo and a bunch of other photos. Here she and her uh, sister and friends are uh, playing in that pool in 1956 with the Victoria Tower in the back. Yes. It's still there. It's quite a bit worn down. Erosion has taken a lot of it away, but it still holds water. It still has a fascination with the kids who come in there if there's water in there. Sometimes the water's not there, but when storms come in and water splashes over, it does get trapped in there. But it's got drainage holes, too. But it's still usable. In uh, April, our program was to view recently acquired images that we obtained, and I showed this uh, this uh, image of the Park Avenue cottages, which I said, uh, you know, during construction or right after construction. We were asked, well, why do you think it's after construction? I don't know, the, at least it was lousy landscaping if it had been there for a number of years. Here's, uh, here's uh, Foster's uh, current photograph. Here's the information that we have. Park Avenue cottages built in 1923 across the street from St. Francis by the Sea Cathedral. Well, kind of. Five identical clapboard cottages with single gable roofs, central doors flanked by casement windows. Clapboard got its name from the sound timbers make on windy days. It was built by Pete Bushman, a former Laguna Beach fire chief, to rent uh, so he could rent them to supplement his income. In the past, it generally was rented to locals who worked downtown. Here's uh, the Mills Cafe on the corner of South Coast Highway and uh, Laguna Avenue. Here's the Heisler Building after being uh, restored. Here they are together. Mills Cafe at the historic southeast corner of South Coast Boulevard and Laguna Avenue, the site of the Heisler Building built in 1931. All right, the plaque on the building says 1930, but the historic resource inventory says 1931. So we don't know. Now the home of Tommy Bahamas and Rock and Fish. The Laguna Art Museum permanent collection includes the Joseph Kleitsch the old post office. It's a painting that was done by Kleitsch, 1922-1933, which shows the John Nicholas Nick Ish grocery store and post office, which was first on the site and there until 1923. The post office, uh, uh, you know, the federal government designated Laguna Beach as Lagona, but Ish effected the change to Laguna Beach in 1904. After 1923, the Mills Cafe was built, which later became the villa, which rented bungalows that are where is now the Glen Airy parking structure. Here's the Nick Ish uh, store and post office at the same corner, there from about 1895 to 1923. So here they are together. Uh, John Nicholas Ish. Nick and Catherine Ish, their grandparents of Laguna Beach Historical Society born, board member Jane Petty Jantz. John Nicholas Ish arrived in Laguna Beach in 1888 to visit his sister, Catherine, who was wife of Joseph Yock. Ish co owned one of the first livery stables in town, known as the Ish and Warling Palace Stable. Ish was a postmaster. His store, the old post office, was located where is now the Heisler Building at Laguna Avenue and South Coast Highway. Of course, back in high school, we remember that as the Jolly Roger. Yeah. Here's the uh, painting by Joseph Kleitsch, which is in the uh, permanent collection of the Laguna Art Museum, the old post office, looking up Laguna Avenue. Here's a Boat Canyon. Here's Boat Canyon now. You'll note uh, there's a gazebo. Uh, Laguna Beach early days, uh, Joseph S. Thurston wrote, Boat Canyon was thus named because it was the best boat landing place along the coast. There was a man who had a shack at this place who made his living fishing. Well, our understanding is that the shack was built by two fishermen, Refugio Coronado and uh, Yovancio Duarte in about 1913. The bluff top house was the cowboy movie star Tom Mix. The gazebo in the now photograph is on private property 
on Marine Drive. It's not the Heisler Point uh, gazebo, which is south of here. This is a lighthouse, I guess. It's gone. But it's a beautiful uh, beach. Where is it? This is, is this area called Eagle Rock or Table Rock? This is called Table Rock. Okay. In the early days of movie making, Laguna Beach was popular for its picturesque coastline. And this 1925 vintage shows, shows a realistic looking lighthouse that was actually a prop for the movie Captain January, released in 1924. Uh, Joseph S. Thurston wrote about Eagle Rock, quote, now there is a pair of great American eagles who have come to make it their home. They build their nest each year and raise a pair of young eaglets to carry on the tradition of the eagles. These great birds will sometimes light in the trees back of the house. They watch me as I go about my work, but they never take any chickens. For 14 years that they have been my neighbors, and I like to see them around. Uh, this location where you're taking that this picture was taken is accessible to the public. It's just that there's no park in there. It's a, it looks like it's a private street. Uh, what's the name of that restaurant right above there? Coyote, Coyote yeah, Grill. Coyote Grill. And if you drive down the street, you can get to this location, but it's pretty difficult to get in and out. But it is walkable from Coast Highway to this location. You can stand here right to the left of where this, photogra where this photograph was taken. There's a gated uh, private property, but this is really available to take a look at and you can see how much erosion is taking down these rocks here. Well, it's called Table Rock Beach as far as I know. If it has... Pardon? Yeah, there would be right up to the Anybody right know, is it called Secret Cove? We don't know. Okay, here's a historic photograph. Here's the current photograph. I think that says Clio Street. Here's the information that we have. The 1910 photograph shows a dirt road, Coast, High, Coast Boulevard, through an area called Sleepy Hollow, approaching downtown Laguna Beach, now near South, South Coast Highway and Clio Street. The view of Main Beach Laguna Bay is now blocked, but there are some hills in the background are still undeveloped. Prior to 1926, the Nate Brooks Gulch at Sleepy Hollow was impassable for wheeled vehicles between the separate towns of Laguna Beach and Arch Beach. Sleepy Hollow's most famous, famous resident was the actor, or silent film actor, Slim Somerville, whose home is now the Beach House Restaurant. Here's a historic photograph. I wonder if anything changed. There's one house up there somewhere. Yeah. Captain's house. That's the captain's house again. So here, uh, uh, looking north, Laguna shoreline from what is known today as Sleepy Hollow. Looking northward, uh, the main beach area of Laguna Beach is nicely displayed in the 1910 photograph. The prominent home on the bluff at the upper right is the captain's uh, house up here. Sleepy Hollow today is seen from just north of the Clio Street stairway. Here's uh, Thalia Street at South Coast Highway, William Mortensen's uh, photography studio. It is now a second reef surf shop. Here's the information we have. Uh, we had a program on William Mortensen a few years ago by Larry Lytle. Mortensen opened a studio on the corner of South Coast Highway and Thalia Street. The Mortensen School of Photography officially opened in 1931. So he comes to town and he says, what the heck, I'll marry somebody. So he married uh, Meredith uh, Monahan, and he met George Dunham, who became a friend and model. Together, William Mortensen and George Dunham collabor collaborated on nine books as well as over 100 magazines and newspaper articles. So basically any uh, photography magazine at that time, more often than not, it had a William Mortensen article in there and ads to sell this kit or that kit or something like that.
Mortensen was a res, uh, restless and relentless darkroom technician. Among other darkroom techniques, Mortensen utilized the metal chrome process, which is a chemical color process that utilized chemical toning locally applied to turn black and white prints into color prints. When I was in high school, my mother worked as a secretary for Mortensen in that, in that location. And uh, I remember he had a lot of students in there. And uh, I remember Mortensen himself meeting him on several occasions. Of course, just being a little kid, I wasn't overly impressed at that time what he really was. But uh, I just remember being uh, a model for pictures being taken in there uh, for some of his students, as were my father and my mother also. Now, um, he was uh, emotional and dramatic, so here are some, uh, some examples. Here's William Mortensen as a self-portrait as a magician. And the photo is courtesy of the Center for Creative Photography, Larry Lytle. Here is George Durnham as a model. This is entitled Suspicion. So what do you think? Suspicion? Maybe. Yeah, more scary. <laughs> uh, scary. Scary by William Mortensen. Here's his wife, uh, Meredith uh, Mortensen. And this is entitled Wind. So a dramatic style that... Uh, 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 some people like, some people don't. Okay, this is the Pomona College uh, Marine Laboratory. Here, uh, here is progress. This is the mobile station. We don't know exactly where they lined up, but uh, they were somewhere around there. Uh, and from the Pomona College uh, website themselves. The biggest addition to the Pomona campus in 1913 wasn't on the campus, but in Laguna Beach, where a marine laboratory was constructed as a gift to the college from interested citizens of Orange County. The laboratory was the culmination of summer expeditions in which Pomona professors of biology took students to the beach to study marine life, first near San Pedro and later at Laguna Beach. The Laguna Beach lab remained in operation with a few interruptions until it was sold in 1943. I wanted to have this in the book, but I could not find a good high resolution photograph of the then image to, to utilize. But uh, I wanted to get this in there, just to make sure you understood where it was located. We used to call that the Serpent Ferry. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, he, they, they had, um, uh, who did that? Uh, Ramsey writes about when they had all the snakes in there. Yeah. So, so it was a Serpent Ferry that Pomona College. Oh, I see. Uh, Four students to a uh, tent, I believe, Skip, and uh, for their rent, uh, they got a, uh, a can of, of, of kerosene with a potato on the spout for safety. Jeez. Those were the days, huh? Wouldn't you like to be there, sleeping in a tent with three other people with a can of kerosene with a potato on the end of the spout? Yeah, this was Howard Heisler's uh, property, and then uh, he built the uh, the tent city, which was later uh, uh, reinforced so it was cottage uh, city. Right here, where City Hall is now, there used to be an AMP. Oh my gosh! Wow. Okay, this is uh, William Wentz's uh, home and studio on Arch Beach. Uh, Jane tells me that the uh, property really was on uh, Coast Boulevard, but when they came through and did that grading, it was left high and above and at the end, end of Arch Street without any um, 
uh, access to uh, Coast Highway. Uh, let's see uh, what has changed. Looks pretty good, huh? Here they are together. Uh, the house was at the end of Art Street, built in 1918. Uh, the home studio of William Went and Julia Bracken Went. He was known as the Dean of Southern California Landscape Painters, a founder of the Laguna Beach Art Association. Uh, Julia Bracken Went uh, was a, su a successful sculptor and a noted designer of medallions. So if you go to the old pottery shack, the old pottery place, on that walk there's a large medallion which they were able to restore of Julia Bracken Went. Uh, this house is on Old Coast Boulevard, but due to the grading, uh, was built uh, in, in 1926. 1926 is now high above, which Arch Street no longer going through to Coast Highway. The way I understand it is this property might be for sale right now. When I took this picture, it was over a year ago. There was no real estate sign there. I have heard that it may be for sale. Don't know. Uh, this is right where we are, City Hall. This is uh, the 1952 presidential election. Eisenhower and uh, United States Senator Dick Nixon uh, running as vice president. So Laguna wel welcomes Dick Nixon. This side is Pat Nixon. Here's the same place today, right out in front. 1952, Richard Nixon, U.S. Senator, campaigned in Laguna Beach as Dwight Eisenhower's vice, Dwight Eisenhower's vice presidential running mate. The photograph shows Nixon along with his wife Pat, Patricia to Nixon's right in front of Laguna Beach City Hall at 505 Forest Avenue. The pepper tree in both photos um, was planted in 1880, 1881 by pioneer George Rogers and one of his daughters, Lizzie. Their house in later years was bought by the Women's Club. 1951, the city demolished the old ranch house building and the present city hall, but preserved uh, the pepper tree. Well, all good things must come to an end so we can have the uh, lights up. Um, I have, uh, if there are any comments, please uh, shoot them in here. Uh, I just, oh, Art, go ahead. On the boardwalk, it became the bowling alley. I don't have a picture of this huge building. Well, do you have a... Uh, in the downtown. Yeah. Well, no, we, we have a website, and we invite complaints. Uh, just uh, <laughs> we don't... We would prefer for, for them to be in writing and in a triplicate, if you don't mind. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, there are a lot of great things that we uh, uh, couldn't include. Uh, working with Foster, I'm sure right now he's happy to go out there and take a uh, before and after photo of the Cabrillo uh, dance hall. I understand Fred McMurray played saxophone there. Mickey Rooney drums. Uh, Mickey Rooney, I talked to him many times. Wow. Had a little outdoor Uh, so I just wanted to mention that uh, working with uh, uh, Foster has been a, uh, a joy. Uh, he is tenacious and, uh, and uh, very interesting in getting, getting things right. Um, uh, I also wanted to mention, you know, this is the, our third program of the year. We'll have another program starting again in September. Uh, yeah, that's right. We're going to take the summer off. So September 24th, Tuesday, will be our next program. And... Um, I had mentioned at the last program, uh, if that's for me, just tell them I'll call back, um, that um, uh, the, uh, the Murphy Smith Bungalow, the Historical Society, we rented from the Wells Fargo Bank. Well, they inspected the premises and they want repairs. So we have a list, like the roof is supposed to be repaired, window, uh, replaced, the roof is supposed to be replaced, windows are supposed to be replaced. Can anybody paint? Is there a painter in the house? Uh, in any event, um, 
Uh, we are uh, appealing for contributions to the maintenance fund. Uh, we're really looking for somebody, uh, I for one, I'm allergic to manual labor, but uh, somebody who could actually do some work and do in lieu contributions would be uh, really nice. Uh, this program, and for the last couple, pro, uh, pro, uh, the last couple years, our programs have been recorded, and we've made uh, DVDs of them. Uh, we have uh, copies at the Murphy Smith bungalow. You're welcome to go in and just borrow it, watch it at whenever you want, and bring it back. Uh, uh, or uh, uh, we'll give it to you because you want to keep it uh, and uh, no charge because we can't handle selling anything. Uh, uh, it, they cost us about $6 each, so uh, on the little card there it says we would appreciate a $6 uh, contribution. Uh, in the back there are uh, return envelopes uh, for the Historical Society, so if you wanted to like give us money, if you have a suggestion for a program, if you have a question, we'd love to do research. We had one today in Stu News. Stu News had a picture of a bakery, and sure enough we had a good answer for it. Maybe I'll tell you about it someday. So we got envelopes, I wanted to thank Foster's, in lieu contributions, the next thing. So, um, Foster, you have anything to say? I have. Maybe we'll do book two, and we'll try to get your picture. Because I know the picture you're talking about. I really want to get that in there too. I remember Cabrillo being the bowling alley course when I was growing up in high school. Afterwards, right. And I saw that picture, and I thought, oh, that would be so nice getting the book. But like I say, it was hard to come by the right picture that Arcadia Publications that made the book would accept. And uh, I was also limited to the amount of pictures that we could use, too, so it was just a matter of choice. I knew there was going to be some that were going to be left out that was going to displease people. I'm fortunately, one of them was the one you wanted. I'm sorry. <laughs> so let me turn this back. Yes, go ahead. Well, there are quite a few homes from the 1932 Los Angeles Olympics, uh, you know, cabins that went up to, um, is that Bluebird Canyon area? What is that area? So it's called Olympic Village. The streets are named after uh, various stars in the Olympics, like Buster Crabb, who later became a famous actor, but Weisskopf, and there's a number of them. Uh, most of them, of course, have been added to, but uh, they, they're up there in that area. Uh, the, you think the parking is tough downtown, try the parking up there, but you can drive up there and look around in that neighborhood. Uh, so let me turn it over to uh, our former president, uh, Kimberly uh, Stewart, to close the meeting. Oh, goodness. Gosh, I just want to say thank you so much for you all coming and your con contributing your comments and, and information. And uh, Mr. Sherman, thank you for that inspiring, perhaps, a follow-up book here. I think this is wonderful. Uh, again, thank you, Mr. Eubank. Thank you, Mr. Felder. I think this has been wonderful. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.